Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome. <clears throat> I am uh, out on a little bit of a walk this morning. It's a beautiful morning down here in Florida. I'm down here for a couple of weeks, playing a couple of shows and uh, doing some work down here. And I was out on this walk and uh, I was listening to a couple of podcasts and one was a devotion um, from the app called Dwell. I think I've spoken to you guys about this app a lot. And it, uh, it was talking about the way that James opened up James chapter one and how he, he opened it up and he said, uh, he said, I, James, come to you as a slave of God. And the commentator was saying that's really some interesting language. Um, that word has so much, so much uh, depth to it and so many feelings towards it and so much, uh, there's just a lot surrounding that word. When you say you're a slave to something, it's not always a good association. And yet when you're a slave, um, that means that you've, you've pretty much come to a point where you are uh, completely surrendered and you have nowhere to go but to that person you are a slave to or to that thing you are a slave to. And so James saying, I'm a slave to God, basically just lays it on the table and he says, okay, this is it, I've surrendered to this. I am not gonna try to refuse who God is. I'm not gonna try and refute who God is. And then I, I moved off of that, um, off of that devotion to uh, another podcast that was talking about, uh, there's a guy, and I'm probably gonna read this book because I really like this author, but it was a guy named, uh, John Mark Comer, and he just wrote a book, and I think it's called like Names for God or What is the Name for God or something like that. And they were talking about who God is. And one of the comments that came up was, God doesn't change, God is who he is. He is, he, one of the names for God is I am, which is very profound to begin with. But, but one of the things that I found interesting was they were talking about, um, God, uh, no, who we, who we make God out to be like a lot of us and myself included. Sometimes we make God out to be this person almost who agrees with everything that we agree with. So God votes the same way that we do. God eats the same type of pizza. God uh, agrees with me with every conversation. And that is a very short sighted, um, look at who God is. And I think part of the beauty of having a relationship with the father is how he challenges us in our own lives and challenges us in our beliefs and challenges us in our theories and in our thinking and, and who we, it's almost like he challenges us to, to be a better person of a better version of who we are instead of us just resigning to the fact that, hey, I'm gonna believe that this God that I believe in believes the same things that I do, talks the same way that I do, walks the same way that I do, and not challenge any of our own beliefs, if that makes sense. And I, I don't think that's the way to, to look at God. I think it's, it's, we have to study who he is and one of the names that they called out and they said was the first thing that God says is that he is a compassionate God. And I was like, man, that's, it's a great way to start off, right? I start off with believing and following the truth that God is a compassionate God. And then in return, I should be a compassionate person and have a compassionate view of my daily walk with Jesus, right? So practice compassion. 
because I'm believing in a compassionate God. And so I don't want to belabor the point here. I don't want to like take this too deep, but maybe it is, maybe actually, maybe it's okay to take it a little deeper and to think about it a little more. And how does God reflect in your life? And if you, how do you name God in your life? And what does that look like in your daily walk with him? Right? How do you reflect who God is and not who your image of God is and not who you say God is, but who God says he is. He says that I am, I don't change. And yet our common practice is to make him who we want him to be. And that is not an act of surrender or trust or faith. That is an act of ego and an act of selfishness claiming that God is who we want him to be. And in, in reality, he is who he is. And our call is to follow him as we walk through this life. It's an interesting conversation. I had never thought about it before. Like this one guy said, um, you know, another conversation that he was having with himself about who God is, is God only loves those who perform well, or God only loves those who you know, are exceeding their, you know, their abilities at their job, in their families, whatever, you know, whatever that looks like. And so that causes you to work harder and be a workaholic and work for your affirmation of the father. And I was like, man, it's certainly a way to go. And I'm sure that I've fallen prey to that uh, over the last bunch of years in my own life. God loves us no matter what. And so if you're sitting and you're watching this or listening to this somewhere on a podcast or on YouTube or wherever, and you're saying to yourself, I need to work harder for God's acceptance. That is not what this looks like. He accepts us for who we are. And our response to that is to accept him for who he is in all of his perfectness, and love and kindness and compassion and grace and mercy and all of that. And so today, as you go about your day, just think about your relationship with God. Think about who he is in your life. Think about what you expect of him and then in turn, what he expects of us. And it is a long, drawn out, deep, almost lifelong conversation, Uh, but it's a beautiful one. It's a conversation where we can just stop and say, okay, with all my flaws, with all the junk that I carry around, I am still loved by the Father. And I'm still, uh, the Father still, His grace is sufficient for me. His mercy is, is here with me. And so, yeah, rest in that today. Don't get caught up in the Uh, in your own definition of who God is. Seek him more and more and more so that you can find out who he is and then emulate that in your life. And look, I, 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 I do this every day, or I try to, and I fail at it. And then there are some days where I just nail it and I just find God in the midst of whatever it is I'm working through that day. And it's a beautiful thing. So let let your interpretation of God be defined by the words of the Bible, by the truths and the promises in the Bible. And let that seep into your life so that you can be more and more like him every single day. Does that make sense? I think it does. Surrender, faith, trust. Let that be a part of your day today. Okay, cool. Um, Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to get back to this walk. Uh, If you want to join us, head over to joindaysband.com. Exciting news. The music app is now available on both the Android store and the Apple store. So if you want to download just the music app, uh, you can do that. Just go to downloadworship.com. 
and you can uh, get involved there. And all 20 albums are there. All the podcasts are there. So uh, there's over 100 hours of content inside the app. So I encourage you to to, to download that, get started right there. And then if you want to kind of upgrade and get a little more involved in our community, you can go to joindaysband.com and get daily devotions and video devotions and access to our Bible studies and all that stuff as well. So lots of stuff going on, lots of stuff that you can get involved with, and we'd love to have you as a part of our community. So uh, those two sites, again, downloadworship.com or joindavesband.com. Okay, today, surrender. Today, seek God. Seek him in all of it so that we can know him more and understand who he is because he is the one that never changes. We change all the time. He's the one that never changes. So seek God today. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.